there booktube welcome back to my channel it's been a while since i made a video which means that i haven't heard from you guys in a while because if i don't post a video you don't post comments and i missed you so i'm here to post a video i stopped by the library today and got some new library books which means that it's time for me to do my library haul if you can believe it we're halfway through the month of may which means that i should be halfway through my may tbr but i'm not but because I like a good challenge, I got even more books from the library. <laughs> so you remember, I've told you as many times as you listen, I'm doing the hashtag Man Booker 50 challenge, which means that I'm trying to read as many of the Man Booker prize winning books as I can this month. And I put some of those books on hold and they came in in the library, so I had to stop and get them, whether I was ready to read them or not. I also got a couple of books that aren't Booker Prize winners. I'm gonna share those with you as well. So we'll start with those. You remember in April, I read Home by Marilyn Robinson. It is a second in a three-part series. And while Home is a standalone book, I enjoy the story enough to want to read the rest in the series. And so this is book two. This is book one, Gilead, which although it is book one, it was recommended that we read book two first, then Gilead, and then Lila. All by Marilyn Robinson. I'm planning to read those pretty soon so I got those other two from the library and as you can tell I didn't bring back the first one yet so I'll probably revisit some parts of it so I can make connections when the time comes. I also got a big book that I can't wait to read and that's The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing. This is about an author who keeps several notebooks, one in which she chronicles the history that's happening around her one in which she's writing a novel one in which she's keeping a journal and i can't remember what the fourth book is and when she meets someone who she wants to guess share herself with she decides to create this golden notebook that includes all of those writings and i can't wait to read this i enjoy books by authors about writing so i'm looking forward to reading that one it's over 600 pages I don't know when the next Tom Topple is, but I haven't read a Doris Lessing before and I've heard really great things about the Golden Notebook. So I'm looking forward to that. That was my non-Booker Prize library haul. But I also got these five Booker winners, 1980, the 1983 winner. I'm gonna tell you them in order, 1990, 95, 1987 comes in here. So. First one is 1980s winner, that's Rites of Passage by William Golding. This is the guy who wrote Lord of the Flies. It doesn't have a blurb on it. This one actually looks like one of those self-published books. It has that glossy feel and the arrangement of the text is pretty interesting. Rites of Passage is about a man sailing to Australia in the early 1800s and he keeps a journal of what's happening aboard the ship in terms of his interactions with the crew and the other passengers. And so I think that's gonna be interesting. I like books about journals. Did I just say that? I did. So William Golding, Lord of the Flies. He's also a Nobel Prize winner, I think. And I've only ever read Lord of the Flies by him. So it'll be interesting to see what he wrote that garnered him the Booker Prize in 1980. J.M. Coetzee is one of those rare repeat Booker Prize winners. He won for Disgrace and in 1983 he won for Life and Times of Michael Kay. Both of these Booker Prize winning books are set in South Africa. The author is South African. This one takes place during a civil war in which a man is trying to bring his mother back home before she dies, but she dies on the way and because of his affiliations I think he's imprisoned and challenged during this war. It is a small uh, novel. It's only 180 something pages. So hopefully I'll be able to squeeze this in before the end of the month. In 1987, Penelope Lively won the Booker Prize for her novel Moon Tiger. And in this one, we're also following an author, which I am just so excited about all these books about authors and writing. In this one, we have an author and she's at the end of her life. She's lying on a hospital bed in London. Imagining that she is writing a history of the world, but she's also thinking about her own life And so the book chronicles her history instead of the history that she wants to write I am so looking forward to reading this. It's just over 200 pages So again another small book. Do you notice how some of these former Booker Prize winning novels are small books as opposed to the more recent Booker Prize winning books that are big books. Anyway, we'll talk more about that another time. <laughs> in 1990, A.S. Byatt won the Booker Prize with a romance novel. This one's entitled Possession, and it's about two people, I guess a couple, who's researching some Victorian authors, 
and fall in love in the process. Is that what the book is about? I hope that's what the book is about. Look at that cover though. This is so unique of a cover and a premise for a Man Booker Prize winning book. Except, you know, the Booker Prize books are about history and political and geographical and social issues. Marketing this book as a romance novel might have been a little bit misleading because it seems like the focus was really on the literary and historical and maybe uh, political content. But I'm looking forward to reading this, even if only because of that Booker Prize winning romance. Unheard of, kind of. And this was the winner in 1990. This is the author, A.S. Byatt. Last book in my haul is a 1995 winner, The Ghost Road by Pat Barker. This one is set in World War I and it follows a young psychiatrist whose job it is to treat mentally ill patients so that they can return to battle. And while he's treating these soldiers, he starts to see similarities between the trauma experienced in Europe in World War I and what he saw when he was stationed as a missionary in the South Seas. And so it's going to be interesting to learn that history because this is a part of history that I'm not very familiar with. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoy reading fictionalized versions of real life events. Did I just say that I like historical fiction? Because I thought that I didn't. Okay, I guess that means that I enjoy a historical fiction that is set in World War I and II. Because that's my favorite time period to read about with that kind of book. Okay. Bring them on. Bring them on, I suppose. So that's it. That is my Man Booker Prize winning and otherwise library haul. So these are the books that I got from the library today. Some of them are Man Booker Prize winning books. Some of them are not. If you see a book here that you're interested in buddy reading with me, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Let me know that you'd like to talk with me about this book. We, I do buddy reads on Goodreads, but if you're not on Goodreads and you want to do a buddy read someplace else, I'm open to that as well. Like I said, some of them are not Man Booker books, so I'm probably not going to be reading those before the end of May. So if you're interested in doing a buddy read during the summer with one of these books, let me know. I'd love to talk with you. Thanks for watching this video. Comment down below. Remember, guys, I'm making this video so I can talk with you. So talk with me in the comments. And until next time, happy reading. Bye.